So my name is Taylor Anderson and I did my project on Ernest Shackleton, a leader forged by failure. So a quick look into um, Ernest Shackleton's childhood. As a kid, he was always into nature and always loved and cultivated around nature and had a passion for it. So his, uh, his parents allowed him to grow and foster in that. At 16, he was able to convince them um, for him to join a crew, a shipping vessel. And on the shipping vessel, he learned lots about how a crew works together and how a captain leads. And though he was not smart in school, um, all the people who worked with him on the ship realized that he was very intelligent in the, the vessel ways. And um, he was able to climb through the ranks and at the age of 24, he himself was commanding his own shipping vessel, which is very, um, intelligence, he has lots of intelligence for the ship, lots of, lots of able to, um, to change with whenever things, as uh, situations change with him, which is very good and what you need. Um, at the age of 26, he, um, went on his first expedition and in his childhood, when you look at these things, these help foster a sense of confidence for any roughage that he had to go through. So... Um, Shackleton went on three, went through three full voyages, uh, three through expeditions. His first expedition was um, Expedition Discovery, and this is led by Robert Scott. On this expedition, this was the first official British attempt to go to the South Pole. With this crew, um, they were ill-equipped via clothing, via food, and via how they were going to man all their equipment down. When they did this, um, they didn't bring any dog sleds, which is ideal for the Antarctic. So they had to haul about five, each man would have to haul about 500 pounds worth of equipment with them. And during this journey, a lot of them ended up getting scurvy or being very cold and having to be um, shipped back home. Uh, they did not get nowhere near what they wanted to. And um, Shackleton with this felt unsatisfied and wanted to do his own expedition. So what he did with this was he did Expedition Nimrod, and this expedition he also did not bring a dog sled, mostly because he was um, ill-informed and ill and did not know how dog sleds work, so he didn't bring one with him. And when he did this, he um, he was a little bit better equipped clothing and food-wise, but only ended up making it 112 miles away from the South Pole, which is a great accomplishment, but not what he wanted, so he had to go back home to, um, to make sure that his whole crew was safe. And then this leads us to the expedition, Expedition Endurance, which was gonna be the expedition where he made it to the South Pole. At this point in time, there was a Norwegian crew who had already made it, um, made it to um, the South Pole. And at this point, he's just trying to make it to himself to, to reach his goal. When they go that they were equipped um, now with dog sleds, with better food and better um, equipment, um, the journey ended up, ended up skewing very shortly because their ship ended up being surrounded by ice and was forced to float around. And then eventually uh, they had to abandon the ship and take the small boats with them because the ship sank. Um, at this point, they were, they were on the Antarctic and they had to trudge through ice for weeks at a time until they can get close, uh, close enough um, to warm enough waters where they can float to uh, South Georgia Island. Um, eventually, they yank it to South Georgia Island, but the opposite side of the whaling station, which leads them to um, Shackleton doesn't want his crew to be discouraged, so he leaves some of them on that side, and he, with a few people, treks to the other side to rescue them. And with this, um, Shackleton had lots of obstacles. Um, his obstacles were one with each expedition he had, having the funds, um, having enough money for it, being well equipped via clothing, um, hiking equipment, dog sleds, um, having the right amount of, having the right kind of food. Um, without certain kinds of foods, fruits, vegetables, um, you were likely to get scurvy and it would deplete your, your team's um, energy very quickly. And then having a dog sled was essential to the survival of the crew. And with this, um, through these obstacles, you learn about Ernest Shackleton's leadership style. His leadership style includes, um, well, philosophy includes theory why. 
which deals with um, people want to work. People are motivated by working and that they enjoy having um, responsibilities. And you can see that where he talks to his crew as if they want to be there and not as if he is forcing them to be there. He also has a democrative leadership style. Um, the only thing he doesn't have in democratic leadership style is the, um, the suggestive because it's an expedition you have to get things done. He is willing for his crew to question him and that's how the, like democratic style is kind of like the suggestive part. But he is willing to work with them one on one in a group and allow them to foster in each other. He also has a great relationship style, relationship oriented leadership. And this is shown by him constantly having talks with his crew, constantly getting their opinions and letting them voice how they feel and also making sure that they feel good so like they are all able to um, work as best as possible. Shackleton's original vision was to make it to the, be the first person to make it to the South Pole. When the Norwegian crew came and beat him to that, his new goal was just to make it to there so he could finish his own goal. Um, when he was on Expedition Endurance, that goal, that vision had to be changed. And when, before you can implement a vision, you have to articulate it to the crew. So Shackleton did a great thing by it. Point blank explaining what they needed to do, how they were gonna get there, and let anybody voice any opinions or concerns that they had for it. While he, after he did that and they officially were implementing the, um, the vision, he's actively working with the crew, working to help push them all back to safety, which was the new vision. Some of the sacrifices that Ernest Shackleton had was his physical sacrifices. He put his crew and his ship before his body, and this uh, ultimately was his demise. He um, received got chest pains on ex expedition discovery, got chest pains, breathlessness, um, even bouts of scurvy um, in expedition discovery and Nimrod. Um, he ended up having sciatica and expedition endurance, which had him bedridden. Um, and even while he was doing that, he was still putting his part of the work into the crew, or at least making sure that the crew felt well. Uh, more morally at least and that they were feeling motivated to finish the job with managing emotions Ernest um, naturally was a very calm and like reserved demeanor so um, he was able especially in crisis he was able to reserve his emotions to himself and not everyone around him so he wasn't barking commands and he wasn't angrily shouting at people when it wasn't a person that he was angry it was the situation and the frustration of the situation and overall um shackleton is a great example of how leaders are made his experiences as a child um, through all three expeditions um, learning through the mistakes of others and himself learning through the successes of others helped him forge the best leader he could be. And that just really shows how leaders are made.